And welcome David from OSP to uh, the Hospitality Talks blog. Thank you so much for your time. Um, David, do you want to just, uh, for anyone that's watching that doesn't know who you are and what you guys do, do you want to just give a brief introduction for me, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, well, so my name is David Chenery. I work for OSP, as you mentioned. So we are effectively restaurant designers. So interiors, uh, graphics and architecture for restaurants, um, food and beverage offers, whether that's pubs or grab and go um, offers through to fine dining, um, mainly focused in and around the London area, but across the UK and some international work as well. OK, thank you very much for that. Um, so obviously you've seen these blogs before, you know the format they take. And, and my, my first question is always what happened? So when, when, when the coronavirus situation became apparent that it was going to be um, a, as big as it is, what happened to your business in those immediate days and weeks and what kind of situation are you in now? Yeah, I think um, if you were to create a business that effectively designs spaces that people go and socialise in, that's not the best business model right now. Um, so, uh, so unsurprisingly, business pretty much dropped off a cliff. Um, I think all of our clients, um, you know, with, with projects that were on the go have put them on pause and the pipeline of new projects, people are just trying to work out what's going on. I, I kind of think of it as... Um, we're in plane crash territory right now and everyone, our business and everyone else's business, everyone's just trying to crash land their own plane with minimum loss of life. And just, <laughs> and, then, and then there's that, you know, after that, we're gonna work out what to do. But yeah, it basically just turned off like a tap. You know, we've got a few projects going on, but it's, um, there's not a lot at all, um, unsurprisingly, because there are bigger things to be worrying about right now than designing a new restaurant. So yeah, it's, uh, it's a strange, strange feeling. Okay, so so how do you adapt, you know, as you say, it's sort of turned off like a tap. How do you adapt to that within a business like yours? Because obviously you don't want to totally lose momentum. So no. what have you been doing? What what, what, yeah. what are you doing? I, I think it's interesting. I mean, obviously the first massive question is around cash flow, which everyone is looking at. So I think it's once you get on top of that and work out that you can survive, you know, we immediately made a war plan for three to six months, expecting that there's going to be very little income how do we survive? How do we look after our staff? How do we keep our you know, team engaged and, and, and make sure our clients are okay, actually? And I think as soon as you can make sure you're okay, then immediately your thought needs to become about your clients and the client industry um, and doing what we can do um, to help. So I think for us, we've, you know, we've reached out to all of our clients to make sure they're all right, see what free design work we can offer to help them, you know, particularly with, um, we, we put an offer to some of our clients to do some work to help them pivot from a uh, eating restaurant to a takeaway or delivery service so we've been doing some free kind of graphic design work to help them with that we've actually extended that um help since then i don't you may not have seen on linkedin or instagram but we put a post out to say look if there are any f and b businesses who are trying to stay open right now to serve their community if we can offer some design support we'll do that free of charge um if that's menus or leaflets or uh, a temporary counter or whatever you need if we can bring our expertise to bear then that's kind of our first thought um i think it's kind of important right now that because everyone is as a crash landing their, their planes and money is not around people businesses are not working to make a profit right now but there's actually a switch we're thinking of making it for the next three months we are a not-for-profit business and we, we need to think you know we need to think about it in that way and then think how what can we do to help our clients our industry to make sure that there is an industry left for us to serve at the end of this mm -hmm. um, and then outside of that help what can we then do to put ourselves in the best position to be able to help in the future so what that's meant is outside of the, the helping free work we're then looking at research on our side so we have we've been massively pushing into sustainability and sustainable restaurant design over the last six to 12 months we've got a project called the restorative restaurant where we're trying to set the the standard for the next level of sustainable restaurant design so we're just throwing all of our energy into that um as a kind of research project to see what we can do and then share along the way and is that research project something that you will then share with the industry or is yeah. it for your clients only? I mean, what does that research project look like? Yeah, absolutely. It will be. It's something that we kicked off. Um, we've been members of the Sustainable Restaurant Association for the last sort of three or four years. And when I was I was a, a judge for the one of the awards last year, and I was talking to the CEO, Andrew Stephen there, and we were talking about this idea of a how can you create a restaurant that is restorative, i.e. that is kind of 
gives more than it takes. And from a design perspective, that's a very interesting idea um, of how you can do that in terms of sourcing materials. So we're wrapping that up into, it, it's a kind of thought piece, um, but we will we will move it into something being, being something very tangible that we can share through written blog posts or through actual design projects. And just, um, it's kind of something that's gonna inform our marketing really over the next six to 12 months so we can, we can help um, people move in that direction really which i think i think is going to be a massively important mm. and do you, and i suppose because of the current situation sustainability projects have pretty much been put on hold alongside everything else so starting up those engines again it might be a slow process so the more information people have got the better yeah i, th I think so i think there is um you know as we as we move from the the, the kind of the past and what's happened into the now and i think there is going to be an increased amount of downtime for people to reconsider what their next move is going to be and you know, increasingly that is going to be you know filled with boredom you know i know james um and think hospitality have done the amazing stuff with hospital live to kind of fill the time of, of people at that level but i know people will start to get what with their planning looking at their next move looking at relaunching sites um and for us it's just important that we like any business that we take the time to make sure we are really honing our positioning and being as helpful as useful um, as we can to anyone that, that is going to be doing stuff in three, six, nine months time, I think. Okay. And so my final question, um, always asked in these blog series, is the future. So what does the future look like for your business specifically? Um, and what do you think the new normal looks like for the hospitality industry? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I think on a, on a, proper long-term basis i.e in a couple of years time personally i think the bounce back to, to what we knew as normal before will be will be there i think it's the medium term reality that's not not very certain at this stage um so for, for in terms of restaurant design for example we're actually doing a couple of other um projects at the moment um where we're looking at what effect social distancing might have to have on restaurant design uh, or coffee shop design so they're hopefully projects that we're going to release um on in the next sort of two to three weeks looking at what, what that how do you basically how can you design um hospitality offers where you reduce human contact but still have a genuine kind of enjoyable human experience which is the whole point i mean people don't go to restaurants yeah. for food they go for the social aspect of it um so so maybe that might have quite a big big part to play in the next sort of three six nine months i think depending on how this this plays out and what government requirements are but i don't know long term for me i always think um you know human beings have evolved for a very 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 long time and we have quite set ways of thinking and about our kind of our wants and needs and desires and anxieties and all of that and i just think that broadly i do think it will go back to the same the same kind of level in a couple of years time but yeah that medium piece that's going to be interesting i think that kind of very turbulent time there will be a lot of opportunity for people doing some interesting stuff where they're really listening and understanding what the market needs um and and, and some kind of interesting concepts popping up i think off the back of that i think there's one interesting thing um, i don't know if you've this in a book um a guy called Stephen Taylor called the psychology of pandemics yeah. uh, he um you can't get it you, you can't get it clearly at the same time exactly well, it's obviously completely sold out you can't get anywhere but I, I read an article he wrote about it and he said that one of the interesting results that always comes out of um, of any epidemics or pandemics is that there is a noticeable uplift in altruism as a result of it because obviously people have banded together they've gone through this um terrible experience and you know uh, you can see it in the way the hospitality industry is responding but people then want to keep that going and I, and I think that that is the one thing i would like to see carrying on in the long, long term so hopefully you know the the increasing rise of social enterprise and kind of social based businesses i hope will carry on sustainability climate change that stuff is really important so hopefully those so i'd like to see those two things carrying on um, and we're sort of putting ourselves in a position to do that you know we want to support better hospitality and that's about customer experience operational excellence and sustainability and, and for us we want to be able to support people in the future who are really doing all of those sorts of things brilliant lovely david chenary from osp thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak Thanks. to us and uh, look forward to seeing that sustainability piece in the future i will share it with you thanks a lot thanks david